The Volkswagen ID3 is already something of a ubiquitous sight in some parts, but this, the Cupra Born, is the sportier version. The pure electric family hatchback of choice, if you will, if you're a bit of an enthusiast and you like a striking hot hatch style of car. Having said that, the Cupra is, of course, the sportier offshoot brand from Seat. And the Born does have exactly the same batteries as the Volkswagen ID3, and it doesn't get any more power either. So you've got the options of a 45, a 58, or a 77 kilowatt hour battery, which delivers an official WLTP range of between 211 and 336 miles. Now, pricing, this is going to start from well under £35,000, so it will be eligible for the government grant, which is £2,500 at the moment. So, expect it to start from around about thirty-two grand and go well up to over £40,000. Anyway, before we have a closer look around the car, don't forget to do all the liking and subscribing. So, like the video, subscribe to the Car Gurus UK YouTube channel, and turn on your notifications so that you don't miss any of our lovely videos. The Cupra Born is, of course, on the same platform as the VW ID3, so it gets rear-wheel drive, a mattress of lithium-ion batteries along the floor of the car, and more space inside than you'd get in an equivalent-sized petrol hatchback such as the Golf. That means a big boot with some useful underfloor cable storage and enough rear passenger leg and headroom for two tall adults to be very comfortable for long stints. The dash is a smart-looking affair too, with the trademark copper tones that Cupra has made its own. So UK trims are yet to be confirmed because we've actually got ourselves into this early left-hand drive car, as you can see, but expect the Cupra to be pretty well equipped. So you're certainly going to get your climate control and all of your basics, even on the cheaper models. And every car is going to get this big touchscreen in the center of the dash. Uh, it's the focal point of everything. It's not that difficult to use. The menus are reasonably logical. I don't mind that. Um, some of the icons at the top can be a bit tricky to hit because they're a bit small, but graphics are good. It's got all of the features you want, including Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Nav, Bluetooth, all of that stuff. I find the worst thing to be uh, not the screen itself, but the touch sensitive buttons elsewhere in the cabin. So touch sensitive on the steering wheel, that annoys me. It's too easy to hit them by accident. Touch sensitive here, they don't respond quickly enough. It's just illogical. I don't think it makes sense to have all this touch sensitive stuff good as it looks. So uh, I find that a little hard to forgive, but you do get used to it. I like the driving position, I like the nice slim steering wheel, and I like the copper highlights. I think that helps to make the Cupra feel a bit different to the other Volkswagen Group brands. So there is still a lot to like about this. Charging in the Cupra at Bourne is via the CCS and Type 2 socket at the back of the car. It charges at up to 125 kilowatts, which is a touch faster than you'll get in alternatives like the Peugeot E2008 and Kia e-Niro. Plug into a 150 kilowatt rapid charger and you'll get a 100 mile top up in around about 20 minutes or a full 80% charge will take more like 30 minutes in the 58 kilowatt hour car that we're testing here and that is likely to be the biggest selling model as well. A home wall box will deliver a full charge in under 10 hours. Right, I'm going to say it up front, this is better to drive than the Volkswagen ID3. And I don't know whether Volkswagen will be particularly happy about that, but it is the case. Uh, this feels like it rides a little firmer, but the payoff for that is that body control feels better. And I'd say that the Cupra turns in a little better as well. It's got a slightly better front end on it. So you do get a bit more of an edge of, it, of this being something close to a hot hatch. It's got a really nice sense of control to it. Now, like I said, it is slightly firmer riding. So if you hit a pothole, that kind of thing, you do feel it. This car is on standard passive dampers. I don't know if Cooper are going to be offering adaptive. I suspect they might do, as you do on the Volkswagen ID3. I think these cars ride better on the passive anyway. It's got a really nice controlled damper feel to it. So yes, like I said, you feel those potholes, but it's not too crashy and you don't get any of that annoying kind of wobble, sort of wallowing feel that you get in softer EVs because they are heavy. This thing weighs nearly 1.8 tonnes. That is a heavy car. Uh, and it does feel it, you do notice it. Particularly under the brakes, you can feel that it's quite struggling to control the weight of this car, and there's not brilliant brake feel in harder driving. So I think I would stop short of saying that this does drive like a hot hatch, but it's certainly fast enough, and it's quite good to drive on a decent country road because the steering's nice and quick and direct, especially if you've stuck it in sport mode. Body control's neat and tidy, and it has got more than enough uh, get up and go. So this is the mid-spec 58 kilowatt hour. That gets 228 brake horsepower and 0 to 62 in 6.6 .6 seconds. It just doesn't feel quite hot hatch enough. It doesn't have quite the urgency that you might want in the mid-range for acceleration to class it as that. 
and I would like a bit more feedback from the steering, but I think this is a really good effort from Cupra. Brake regen, stick it in a heavier brake regen mode with this switch up here, and that's quite good for around town. Other than that, it's quite moderate. You don't really even notice it. It's not a one pedal mode, uh, as you get in the Nissan Leaf, for instance, and in the Renault Megane E-Tech, which I think that is the car that's gonna be most competitive with this. Uh, and I certainly think that the touch screen in that is better than in this. So I think that Renault could really worry Cupra in terms of the handling on the, on the Megane. I think that might be more of a hot hatch than this. Even so, I am really enjoying flinging this thing around. It's really good fun. I wish visibility were a little better. So the rear window is a bit narrow and the view to the rear three quarters is uh, pretty obscured too. Real world range, well, I haven't spent as much time in this car as I'd like to sort of give a really good accurate indication. But I think a worst case scenario, so lots of motorway miles in really cold weather, you're going to see, mm, I think, more like 150 to 160 miles. In the summer, I'd expect you to get much closer to the claimed WLTP range of 261 miles in this 58 kilowatt hour car. The Cupra is one of the most likeable cars in this class. It's brilliantly judged in terms of its dynamics and it's just a really excellent package in general. It's practical, it's fun, and if you're not tempted away by the Renault Megane E-Tech and its much better infotainment system, then the Cupra Born promises to be one of the best all-round electric family hatchbacks in the class. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the CarGurus UK YouTube channel and don't forget to head to cargurus.co.uk where you will find loads of great used cars, electric and otherwise, and we'll even tell you right up front if it's a good deal or not.